Hello everyone, my name is Bingja. Welcome to the first video of IGCS Emacs uh, 0580. So, as you know, I had graduated for years, so my textbook is obviously not with me anymore. So, I am actually following the CAIE syllabus guide that you can find it online in the CAIE website. So, today we are, I'm going to be t sharing with you uh, about chapter 1 which they denote it as E1, because I'm going on the extended part, which we will be, I will be introducing you numbers. Wait a second, okay. Which I will be introducing you to numbers. All right, numbers. So, all right, so the, we have a few types of numbers that I will be introducing to you. The first one is, the difference between whole vs natural numbers all right and natural numbers have the notation of n all right so whole and natural numbers are both numbers that starts from 1 2 3 4 and goes to infinity but the difference between whole and natural numbers is whole numbers include 0 all right and natural numbers natural numbers here does not include zero all right so if you are asked in the exams maybe on the first question they will ask uh, determine which one is whole and which one is natural number you need to remember that natural numbers does not include zero all right so after we have talked about all these we will go on to integers all right we denote integers as a z okay and integers are numbers which have no decimal points all right so for example uh from zero onwards one two three to positive infinity and we can go from negative one to all the way to negative infinity all these are counted as integers as well as they don't have any decimal points right so for an example 1.5 is not an integer number because the 0 0.5 is a decimal point so we have looked at these three types of numbers. We will now go on to something called as a rational number. <clears throat> All right, so we denote rational numbers as Q. So what are rational numbers? Rational numbers are numbers that can be, uh, can be expressed in fractions or whole numbers. All right, so for example, 25. Wait a second. All right. It's, it's a bit, it's laggy a bit. All right, so for example, 25 over 3 or even uh, 9, which is equals to 3 or 1 or 0, all these that can be expressed in whole numbers or fractions is called rational numbers. So the question is, is 1.5 a rational number? And the answer is yes, because we can obviously, uh, we can show it in 3 over 2, right? So uh, all these are rational numbers. So you might ask, what are not rational numbers, all right? So I'll give a little bit of examples on irrational numbers. So what are irrational numbers? Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be expressed in fractions or whole numbers. For example, pi. All right, we know that pi had, doesn't have an ending value. We just know that it's 3.142 in three decimal places. Or even maybe cert 5. Cert 5 cannot be expressed in, in fractions or any whole number. Yeah, so cert 5 is definitely an irrational number. So you can have a lot more other stuff that, uh, that are not irrational numbers. So these are the difference between rational and irrational numbers. So after I have uh, introduced to you all these this five types of numbers, uh, I, will need to tell, I will need to introduce you real numbers, right? Real numbers include every single number that you have seen on the top. Real numbers include whole numbers, natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. So, real numbers is actually a, the, everything. All right. So, what are not real numbers is actually imaginary numbers. So, imaginary numbers is not in the IGCSE syllabus. 
but it's consisting of a cert negative one. Yeah, so this is imaginary numbers. So this is just for your information. So yeah, we had uh, we had talked about everything about the types of numbers that we know. So the next thing I will be talking about is uh, the L the prime numbers. What is prime numbers? All right, prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided, that can only be divided by one, and divide by itself. All right. So what does this mean? Let's let's take a look. All right, and take note that one. Is not a prime number. Alright, one is not a prime number. The first smallest prime number is two. Let's see if two actually have all the characteristics. If two divided by one can be divided by one, and two can di can be divided by itself and cannot be divided by anything else. So is three a prime number? Three can be divided by one and can divide by itself. It can only be divided by itself. So we will write only here. All right. So now let's take a look at four. Four can be divided by one, but does four only can uh, available to divide by itself? No, because four can be divided by two. So this is the example of prime numbers and not prime numbers. And if you, uh, if you dig more deep into it, you can you can actually memorize the the first few prime numbers easily. And these are all prime numbers, as you can see. If you want to verify, uh, sorry, if you want to verify it, you can actually test out whether, whether or not they divide. They can be divided by one, and only can be divided by itself. So and so on. You can list it out yourself. All right. So these are the prime numbers that you need to know. All right. So next, I will be talking about LCM and HCF. So what is um okay. Um, so what is LCM? LCM is lowest common multiple. So what does it mean? So let's take an example. We have the word, the integer 2 and 3. So we are going to be listing out every single multiples of it. All right. So and we're going to look for the lowest common multiple. So what are the multiples of 2? So if you have memorized the table or it's it's just natural. So it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on. Now, now let's talk about 3. So 3, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. So as you can see from here, we look for the first same multiple. So from here, we can see that the same one is 6. Right, so this means that six is the LCM of two and three. All right, so obviously you cannot list out all the multiples every single time, especially when you have a very very big number like thirty three and sixteen. So what do we do here is we will start to uh, divide. All right, so first let's divide by 3. All right. So 33 divided by 3 is 11. All right. And 16 cannot be divided by 3, so we will bring it down. All right. The next one is what can be divided by 11? 11 is a prime number if you can see back from the previous one, from the previous part. So we will divide by 11. So this will go up to 1. All right. And this will remain at 16. So we would take the lowest prime number to divide every single time. So 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So we're going to have another 2 again. And 2. And last but not least, 2. So from here, we multiply every single number here. All right. So if you have your calculator with you, you can multiply 3 times 11 times 2 to the power of 4. Actually, it's just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So from the calculator, we get that the lowest common multiple of 33 and 16 is 528. So this is the LCM of 33 and 16. 
So 528 is the LCM of 33 and 16. So this is how you look for LCM. So what is the difference between LCM and HCF? All right. So now we're going to be looking at HCF. Let's draw a line and yeah. I'm sorry, I don't really, I'm, I'm, I'm not really used to this pen. So HCF is called as the highest common factor. So the difference between multiples and factors is multiples you go upwards. So the numbers go bigger and bigger, as you can see from here. Oh, wait a second. All right, as you can see from here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, it goes larger and larger. All right, but for factor, we are taking the multiples of two integers that can result to the integer. All right, so what is the meaning of this? Let's say 12. Let's say the integer 12. All right, so what are the factors of 12? First thing first, 1 is always a factor. 1 is a factor and 12 is always one of the factors so that you can get 12 by 1 times 12. So 1 and 12 uh, uh, is one of the factors of 12. Next, we go to 2. 2 can be multiplied by 6. So 2 times 6, we get 12, right? So last but not least, we have 3 and 4 because 3 times 4 is 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 are the factors of 12. Okay. So the next next one we will look at the number 16. All right. Same same thing is 1 and 16 must be the factor of 16. 2 and 8. 3 cannot be 4 cannot be yeah, 4 can. So 4 times 4. So the factors of 16 only consists of 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. So these are the factors of 16. So we are looking for the highest common factor. So what are the highest common factor? We will look at the common, the common factors that we can find between 12 and 16. So 1, both 1 is included, both 2 is included, and both 4 is included. Therefore, we can say that the HCF of 12 and 16 is 1, 2, and 4. Okay, so this is all about LCM and HCF. And before I end this video, I have one, a few more things to say here. So I will clear the canvas here first. So as I was editing the video just now, I found out that I made a, I made a small mistake at the HCF part. So, and from the last part, HCF, we get that uh, 12 and 16, the factors of 12 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, and for 16 is 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. So, from here, uh, HCF means uh, highest, um, wait a second, it lagged again. Um, I don't know why my computer lags this time when I start to record. So this means the highest common factor. So by highest mean, we are going to take the 4 because these two are the highest. So I, I mean from uh, the same is 1, 2, and 4. So 4 is the HCF of 12 and 16. Yeah, so this is the little mistake where I included 1 and 2 from the previous one. So we can actually further check whether 4 is really the HCF of 12 and 16 by another method, which is the division method. So if this is 12 and 16, we are doing the same, like uh, we are doing similar stuff like the LCM. So uh, first thing first, we're going to divide by 2. So 12 divided by 2 is 6 and this is 8. So we divide by 2 again. So it's 3 and 4. For HCF, we will stop when one of it cannot be divided. Right. If we divide by 2, then 3 cannot be divided by 2. So we will stop here. So the HCF of, of 12 and 16 is 2 times 2, which is equals to 4. So this actually proves that the HCF is correct. Right. So if we are to continue from here to LCM, all right, so from here it's 3 and 4. 
we will continue with 3. So it goes 1 and 4, and 2, 1, 2, and 2, 1, 1. So the LCM of 12 and 16 is 4 times 3 times 4, which is equals to uh, 1648. All right. So yeah, this is just a little bit of an uh, amendment to the mistakes I made just now. Okay, in this last part of the video, I'll be talking about the square numbers and cube numbers. So actually, this is uh, nothing much. Uh, square numbers are basically just, let's say, 2 to the power 2 is 4. So the square number of 4 is 2, because 2 square is 4. Same thing goes to 9 and 16 and so on. So these are the square numbers. And the cube numbers, uh, it's like 8 or, okay, sorry, 8 or 3 to the power 3 is 27, 4 to the power 3 is 64, and so on. So these are cube numbers and these are square numbers. So if you have time, maybe you can list out the, all the square numbers all the way to maybe 6 or 7, right? Or, yeah, up all the way to 6 and 7, so that maybe you can recognize some of the numbers when you when you see them in exams. So you can strictly, let's say the exam gives like question one, what are the name, what is, sorry, what is the name of the following series? 4, 9, 16, 36, uh, 25, and so on. So, Automatically, if you if you are, if you recognize them, you will know that the answer is square numbers. All right, square numbers. So yeah, this is about square and cube, and we have come to the last part of this. Oh my God, what's this? Okay, we have come to the last part of this video. I'm going to be talking about uh, a little bit of reciprocals, right? Reciprocals. Reciprocals are actually 1 divided by the number. So let's say the number is uh, number is 6. If we are looking for the reciprocal of 6 is 1 over 6. It's just that. All right. So in, in this term, we will write to the power negative 1. All right, so this we will learn in the future videos. We'll be talking about indices. So another example is let's say uh, let's say a graph is y equals to x. All right, the reciprocal reciprocal of this will be y equals to one over x. All right, and so on. So it's that it's basically one divided by the number. So this is called the reciprocal. So yeah, this marks the end of the first video. Uh, yeah, this is my first time recording this, and I. I'm not a tuition teacher, I don't have any experience, so I am still learning. I hope you guys will give me this chance, and thank you for watching. I hope I helped you guys, All right? Thank you.